Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Ksa Talk Show. Today is 2019, October 8th, Tuesday, San Francisco time, California, 10 o'clock a.m. in the morning. Good morning, Bartholomew. Good morning, Joss. And good morning, people on Discord. Good, bon- good morning, Zitron Crazy. So again, let me show my Discord channel. So this is some sort of Ksa fan club. And uh, you know you can go there and chat to me or to other people. Okay, let me paste that. And today, good morning, Green Deck. And uh, and this is what Discord looks like. It's pretty nice. Uh, I'm still learning it. I just started to use it uh, two days ago. Oh, should check out based name. Okay. So and Discord, you know, the the funny thing about the the I think the great thing about Discord is that it actually also supports voice channels and uh, video as well. I don't know about video, but at least it supports voice channels, just like uh, TeamSpeak. So that if you are a gamer, you know you can you can use Discord to talk to your teammates. And uh, apparently, it is one of the original goal of Discord. So I suppose I suppose it is very good, and I'm going to try it. Uh, voice channel, yeah. So. Okay, that's about Discord, and uh, did I p- paste the link? Yes, I did. Okay, I have some topics prepared. I'm going to talk today, and if you guys do have questions, just post it. Okay, uh, with uh, <laughs> with with my name on it. <laughs> but I will start to talk now. Now I'm going to for a change today. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, DP. I'm going to do a pleasant talk with melodious voice, and no more. You know, you know, you know what is a uh, melodious voice. You know, <laughs> so I'm going to stop that. I'm going to try to stop that. And as Yoda said, there is no try, just do, and I will do. So, no more, you know, things like that, and I will try to be not repetitious, like I just said already. You know, no more, no more, you know, and don't say it again. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so that is what I'm going to do. I, you know, you when you do a video, you have to think about your audience, and this also applies to blog blogging. If you have not done blogging before, or if you don't do YouTube before, you may not know. But if you are a blogger, you know that typically, if you want to become popular, I don't mean like abusively popular. But you know, if you want like people, if you want more people to follow you, one of the things you have to think about is that you are writing or you are doing something for them. Like always, think about your audience perspective, like what they want to know. Instead, instead of just going on about yourself, like what you did today, what I did today, what I, I thought about what what I think, things like that. So I'm going to try to do that today, and there will be no swearing today. So this episode is will be very safe for work, very safe for work. Lower the speed of your talking. Do I still have to lower it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm already talking very slow. Uh, so let me answer. Bartholomew said something. I hate you for promoting Discord. There's, there is nothing I can do about that. It's like YouTube, you know. <laughs> okay, it's like it's like YouTube. 
Okay, so I want to. There's something I want to talk about. So let me just start get going. Okay, so every time I did a video after after about two hours, it will show up. The live stream will show up on YouTube, and usually it's a pain when you have a long video such as one hour. It is a pain to know. At what point you started to talk about which subject? This is often the problem. For example, sometimes I go to visit, you know. For example, sometimes I watch Jordan Peterson's video, and uh, often it is very long, one hour or two hours. But what I want to know is like a breakdown of topics at what time, timestamp for each topic, and that turns out that is. Extremely consuming to do because I have tried to do that for my past videos, and、uh, if the if the video is one hour, typically you will end up spending two or more hours just to get the timestamps. Because when you are talking, you know it is not simply jumping around and to get the timestamp, but also you have to dissect the whole full hour talk. To find out which which is the topics to break them down, things like that. So that is very time consuming. So if you guys watch my video, I know some of you do after li the live stream. So it would be nice, you know, to to put timestamps in the YouTube comments. If you do that, that'll be great. That'll be appreciated. So that is about that. The next topic, and also feel free to、uh, to edit my videos and put on your own channel. Okay, feel free to do that. You can post video clips on other websites. I don't mind. When you have a long video, usually people are impatient, especially today. They are impatient, but however, some part of the video is good. So you want to typically when you are popular, like some of these、uh, popular YouTubers, they have a different account that are just the clips of the cream of the video. So I like to have that, but I don't have time to do that, and I don't know video editing so well. So, but you, I I know some some people do that often. So if you like to do that, feel free. Okay, the next topic is so on my Xa Talk Show page. You go to my website, you'll see my Xa Talk Show page. I did some. There's a kind of new interface, so you can see my YouTube account link start at top. Okay, my donation box and Bitcoin and so on, and、uh, then there's my YouTube link, my Discord link. And、uh, here are Xa Talk Show topics. Brain, this is basically my scratch pad for what topics I'm going to talk about. It is not in a in any way. It 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 is just a、uh, my own scratch pad. But you can go there if you find anything interesting. Just type it. I'll talk about that. So that is about that. And. The next thing, let's talk about four chan, because I noticed since about half a years ago, my name appears on several chan websites often, like every month. Hold on, the the garbage truck is passing by again. So my name is mentioned in many several of the chan channels, including. Four chan, eight chan. There's also tiny chan. Okay. Uh, so I thought it would be interesting to talk about them. You know, in in the past week, my name has been on four chan three times. Okay. So before we do that, let's read the comments thoroughly and see what's up with you guys. So Bartholomew Bartholomew says Discord Discord also officially supports giving all your data to NSA. 
well, <laughs> who doesn't? That includes Twitter, Facebook. It's, it's, if you use the web, that happens today, okay? Bartholomew Muir says, do take, do take more time to form your sentences. This helps in avoiding repetition. Yes. Naibo says, my Emacs config is coming along. Have some questions, though, related to Emacs and other. Shoot, type it. You know, it's always better. Like, this also happens uh, in online forums for my obs observation in the past 20 years. It, you know, usually it's bet better if you directly just just shoot out the a uh, question instead of a meta question. Unless the forum has some kind of rules, things like that. But those rules that they went away because that's not what we people want. Yeah, so this is another topic. You know, in the past, for example, let's go to so let me uh, let me show you this page about uh, hacker code okay hacker code and uh, this page I talked I made a video talking about this page two days ago or three days ago Netacut anthropology tales of tech geekers now Netacut is a very popular term throughout 1990s and uh, almost throughout to, uh, 2000s netiquette but that term has gone away because that's not what people want but however back then every programmer every hacker type of programmers meaning you know the unix people or you know hacker types you know the people uh, programmers who talk a lot online they tell you what to do, they tell you programming styles, they tell you programming idioms, they tell you what language you should use, you know, this type of people. They, it's very popular among this type of people. Netiquette. Netiquette, if you don't know, it is basically a set of rules that these people has formed that they tell everyone they should follow. For example, one of the rules is when you go to a new school for the first time, do not just jump in and start to post your question. Don't do that. Instead, you should spend like one week lurking. That's uh, another jargon back then. You, you, you should spend some days uh, reading what people say and read and read the frequently asked questions. That's another thing. Before you start to add, ask questions. So that is one of the net quote back then. And uh, there are a huge amount of flame wars and fight about this, <laughs> just, just like today. Uh, but eventually, Netiquette, the concept of Netiquette itself is dead, because that's not what people want. You know, that the programmers are thinking the world should be this way, but actually they don't know reality. So eventually, the network concept died, and today, you know, we have Twitter, Facebook. They they become far worse than than what these hacker type of people wanted. So network. So that's about network. Uh, let me keep reading the comments. Okay, yeah, so if you have a question about Emacs, Nibel, just post it. <laughs> Ruby fan, for repetition, I write loop, print, blah. The message held for review, I sexually identify as trans pronoun ignorant. Um, oops, I should not read that. Bartholomew says, there is nothing I can do about it. Why are you so near, near, nihilistic? Be more <laughs> flowery. <laughs> uh, do you use Python or anything? Okay, so let me answer the question. So Bartholomew says, I use the web and it does not happen because I'm conscious of what I use. Recently, I switched to my own Nextcloud instance. How am I setting my own data. Okay, you are, you are special, Bartholomew. <laughs> you are special. And a lot of hacker types are like that. But we lost the war. 
Okay, I, I don't want to talk about this uh, topic because because I talked about this so often in the past. But anyway, my point is, you know, we have been like that for the past 30 years and basically and look at what today's society has become and especially in the programming community. Where did the window go? The chat window just disappeared. Okay. Just because I clicked a link. Okay, let's restore chat and uh, pop it out again. Okay, so I don't know what is next cloud. Let's see Wikipedia. This should be interesting. Next Cloud is a suite of client server software for creating and using file hosting services. Next, Next Cloud application functionally is similar to Dropbox. Oh, unlike Dropbox, Next Cloud does not offer off premises file storage hosting. Next Cloud is free and open source, which means that anyone is allowed to install and operate it on their own private server devices. In contrast to proprietary services like Dropbox, the open architecture allows adding functionality to the server in the form of applications and enables users to have full control of their data. Okay, I, I still don't, don't get what exactly it is. Okay, back to the comments. The social media platform involves past and people in the, uh, Good morning, David Corner. After setting up the instance, I was inspired to write at least one app for Nextcloud. Okay. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about 4chan. There are some messages I want to mention. I, I'm not sure it's a good topic to talk about, but you know, since people are talking about me, I might answer some of it. So there are three posts on 4chan about me. So let's just look at them and see if there's something fun. I read it today, yesterday. So this post is about, OK, Thread Archive cannot reply anymore. This is two days ago, October 5th. So it says, is Mathematica really better than Lisp? Is it really worth $1,500 a year? I always thought it was a meme, but it looks really nice actually. So does it re actually cost fifteen thousand a year? That's I don't think that's that much. You pay like two thousand dollars, I think. You buy the whole thing. You buy it, and you can use. It's not based on subscription, but I think there are subs subscri uh, subscription services. But I don't think it's fifteen thousand dollars a year. But anyway, so. 4chan people they are talking about me and uh, uh, so I see Childs here and uh, I see Max Rater name mentioned here by the way 4chan as you know is very you cannot trust 4chan because 4chan or anything goes it's anonymous you don't know who is who you don't know uh, who they are uh, but there is this comment, which is kind of silly. So he says, please take everything Sally says with a grain of salt. I'm, I'm going to criticize uh, his comments, okay? So he says, he continues, his obsession with Mathematica is probably the most bizarre of his many bizarre opinions. He keeps comparing it to general purpose programming languages without realizing such a comparison is meaningless as it effectively applies to oranges. Effectively apple to oranges. Okay, he is incorrect. He continues, Mathematica is an amazing tool with no equal in its field. 
but it is not, nor was it ever intended to be a general purpose programming language. Wrong. That's why wondering whether it's better or worse than Lisp or any general purpose programming language is a meaningless question. Okay? Sally is an enigma to me. He is genuinely knowledgeable about things such as keyboard and mice history and Emacs, and yet he often holds autistic opinions that no sane over 40 years old would have. Not to mention many of them are poorly argumented at best. Still an alright guy overall though. So, so among 4chan posts, you would say this one would be the extreme. <laughs> extreme well said. You know, because typically all 4chan posts, they are brainless garbage. And this one would be extreme. You will see a post like this, one in 10,000. Okay, so I'm going to address this one. So basically his point is that Mathematica is a not a general purpose language. Meanwhile, he says Mathematica, he agrees Mathematica is, in his words, an amazing tool with no equal in its field. Okay. So for, in, a, in a sense, he is basically saying I'm right. Okay, he is basically saying, yeah, Ksali is right. Okay, but his quibble is that Mathematica is not a general purpose language. Now, that is incorrect. First of all, that is not incorrect if you have to say whether it has is, is meaningful at all. Because first of all, there is no scientific precise definition of what general purpose programming language means. For example, uh, C, C++, Java, Crozier, Haskell, they are all considered general purpose programming languages. Also, Perl, Python, Ruby, JavaScript, these scripting languages are also considered general purpose languages. But however, if you compare C, for example, to Python, for example, they are entirely in different category. Right? So, so what do you, so let me ask you this, try to define, try to give a definition of what is a general purpose language right now, try to think, think, try to think right now, what is, what is, what would you say is the definition of general purpose, or if you are not academic, simply think about, so for example, give me a language that is not general purpose language try to think of it. So basically what I'm saying is that what is your concept of general purpose language? If, if you actually think about this, then you will, <laughs> you will see that, you will see that, you will see that this, his um, proposition is kind of silly, doesn't make sense because because first of all, we cannot even define, you don't even have a general idea of what is, what does it mean to have a general general purpose language. First of all, that term is thrown, thrown about by programmers all the time. But what is a general purpose language, right? And uh, so if C is a general purpose language, and then Python is a general purpose la purpose language, why is Mathematica not a general purpose language? Now, let me give you another reason. The list data type, such as Perl's list, or, or list in Ruby, in Python, in JavaScript, they have different names. Some, some, some call it list, some call it array, okay? But basically, Perl is basically the first language, high-level language to have list data type such that you can manipulate add items, remove items, remove items in the middle of a list, things like that, Perl. This is in 1995, Perl began with that. So many people, when, when Perl was around, many Lispers, many people 
including lispers, start to say, they begin to say, usually, no, not actually lispers don't say that. But many programmers begin to say, Perl is a lisp. Now, this concept, Perl is a lisp, or some language is a lisp, became very popular because 10 years later, people say Python is a lisp. Python is a lisp. This, this very idea, you know, who says Python is a lisp? Peter Novick, okay? Peter Novick, the lisp master, who is a expert of classic AI. He wrote books about lisp, common lisp. Peter Novick said, he, Peter Novick is the first person in Lisp community that that advocate Python. In fact, he you know this is very well known. This is back in two thousand five, two thousand four. Among Lisp programmers, especially in Common Lisp, Peter Novick pushed Python to become to tell other Lispers to use Python. Okay. Then later on, when per, uh, when Ruby became popular, many people say Ruby is Lisp done right. You know, this is a funny phrase. This, you know, something something done right. So people say people start to say Ruby is a Lisp. Ruby is a Lisp done right. Why? Because Ruby is based on two languages: Emac Lisp and uh, Perl. Ruby is based on Emac Lisp and Perl. So people start to say Ruby is Lisp done right. So so you see, as time goes on, programming languages becomes generally higher level, higher, higher in level. So Perl is the first language to allow programmers to freely manipulate list as a higher order by just by functions without worrying, worrying about memory addresses, things like that. So these, these, these are all general purpose languages. Now, Mathematica, let me talk about Mathematica. Mathematica contains, you know, okay, let me, let me say this. Today, many languages support big nums. Do you know what big nums are? Big nums are such that numbers with infinite precision. For example, you want to find the one billionth prime number. Now the number of digits of that number is too too many to fit into four bytes or five or, or eight bytes. It's in, you know very large. You have to, for example, let's say you want to compute the digit of pi. You want to break the record. Now suppose now if you save that number, you have to. It fills few gigabytes of disk space you cannot fit that number into memory so what do you so how do you what do you do when you want to compute such a number you have the concept of big nums which is also known as infinite precision number okay so today many languages actually has that feature in python i know i know you have that package and uh, in JavaScript, it's coming to JavaScript in next version also, 2020 or some, something like that. It's, it's coming to JavaScript. So, but big num, the concept of infinite precision numbers are in Mathematica since 1996 or so, 1999 or so. So what I'm saying is that you see th through the evolution of programming languages, more, more and more advanced features are becoming part of the language by default out of the box. So when you say Mathematica is not a general purpose language, what what does that mean at all? Because Mathematica can do anything your language can do. It can do anything Perl, Python, Ruby, Java can do. So those are general purpose. Why is Mathematica not general purpose? Mathematica just has more features. That's all. More, more. For example, solving equations. For example, let let me give you another example. So we have big nums. That's one example. We have list. That's another example. Let's do another example. Solving equations. Suppose you have an equation. Let's say a simple one. X uh, solve polynomial equations. Okay, 
x three third power plus one equals to zero. You want to know what x is symbolically. Let's say not symbolically. Symbolic. Let's just say numerically. You want to know what x is. In many of today's languages, you can do that. You can do that in Python. Uh, you can do that in Python because Python has now now a lot of math libraries. You can do it in Julia, for example. You can do it in uh, any language. Lots of MATLAB. Any many languages can solve this numerically at least. So, Mathematica, Mathematica can do that since 1990, 1980s. So why, what is the reason today's language, let's say Golan, or let's say Haskell, or let's say Crozier, any, any of the today, today's new languages, why should that language not have this building? For example, you just type, for example, let me show you Mathematica, solve. S L O L V E. Okay, this is how you solve it in Mathematica. Okay, you type this in Mathematica. Press Enter. It will give you a symbolic solution, not numerical. Okay, actually, it will give you a symbolic solution. Now, if you want numerical solution, you do that. Okay. Now let's look up Mathematica uh, documentation just just to show that. Mathematica solve function. So this is a function. You just type it. It'll give you answer. Okay, solve expression variable attempts to solve the system expression of equations or inequalities for the variable vars. Okay, that's solve. Now let's look at n solve. Now remember the re the result of this function is symbolic. It's not just number. It's symbolic. Okay. Now let's try another n sub. Now n sub are just like sub, except it, it gives you numerical solutions. Okay, so so what is the reason for a programming language not to have these or derivative? Let's say derivative or integral solving. You know, give you derivative. What 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 is the reason? Basically, you don't have any good reason. I mean, it, as 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 long as our resources grow, you know, the our hard disks grow, our computing power, the power of a computer language grows, there's really no reason to not have this. And in fact, they are starting to have it in Python, for example, as packages. You download this Anaconda something, scientific thing, then you have the all these out of the box, not all, but some of it. So that's my point. So he says Mathematica math, math, math is not general purpose language. That's just that's just wrong. What you could say is that what you could say is that Mathematica is not a language designed like C to to be to be to be embedded in CPUs. That is true. Okay, that is true. But then again, that's just C. C, C++, Java, you, you guys do that. But that's not true for Python, Perl, Ruby, Clojure, for example. At least Python, Ruby, for example. But they are still general purpose. OK, that is about that topic. Good morning, Scott. So, OK, what, what is the next topic? So I, I did I miss anything interesting comments? So Bartholomew says, OK, Bartholomew says a lot of things. Bartholomew says it's basically like a cloud where you save all your stuff, monitoring your servers. OK, uh, Bartholomew is talking about next cloud, that thing. OK, uh, I saw that it cost about 2000 a year. No, you can buy a you can buy the software. Maybe you are. I don't think that's true. Not a year. Uh, Mathematica. So Nibo says, and what was watching one of your videos, the Tianya Genu one, I found a post related to it, but it was so long. Can you talk about that article? Oh, yeah, so I have a um, that's about poetry 
music and culture and also about women okay uh, a sensitive topic but let's see where we go with that so I wrote this article this article is about a song in a movie lust caution you may or may not know about it it's very popular back in this movie is around 2008 I think lust caution that's the English title and this movie is made in China it is about World War two era World War two China versus Japan you know Japan is invading in China in Shanghai around the city Shanghai and there is a traitor Chinese traitor it's a common thing theme in, in in modern Chinese history you have traitors because Japanese are invading China and they want to you know they, they, they want people who speak Chinese to help them control the cities and places so you have these traitors they they get they take money from from uh, Japanese and they help the Japanese control Chinese people so and one of one there are several of them are very famous uh, popular these traitors in Chinese history and this movie is talking about one of them where you have this then you have this rebel group they are trying to kill this traitor so that is this movie uh, is about actually that's a background story that's a context of this movie the movie is about this girl she is part of the rebel group young young uh, they were students young people typically the, all these kind of things are young people so she is part of the group who are trying to assassin this this traitor uh, you know very rich usually these traders are, traders are very rich you know they take money from the Japanese so but instead of okay should I give you the should I um, what they say the should I tell you the ending but anyway so this is the story she become a spy she it's quite an interesting story uh, in psychology as well she so she became a spy and she fell in love with a traitor it's all planned okay she fell in love with a traitor it's all according to plan but then something happened that's the that that is the story of this movie lust caution uh, so so do you have a question about that nim nimbo okay so what guys say something so what are we talking about now are we we have been talking for only 40 minutes the night is young Green Deck says anything new about Hong Kong pro protests yeah there's lots of stories it's getting uh, it's pretty bad but nothing changed they they the they getting violent and more violent every day they, it, not more but it's it's very violent they break all the uh, subway stations metros and all that so ni Nibo Nibo you asked about that question do you ask you asked about that website do you have any specific questions you want me to say about that about that this article so oh yeah so let me read the title so the wandering song stress can you trust women you know on on <laughs> obviously that's a sens sensitive topic you know on 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 4chan I've seen people are, are saying I'm a misogynist okay now that's a big topic that's there's a lot to talk about that so <laughs> I'm not sure I want to dive into because to talk about that it's gonna be at least one hour I'm gonna do that one day not today today we already talked 40 minutes about it so anyway back to this article this 
so this this is a movie okay this 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 is a tremendous for me, at least from the way I you know when I watch a movie unlike when I, when I watch a movie I typically for example even superhero movies Batman Spider-Man Thor when I watch movies you know suppose it's a two hour two hours movie but typically I spend six hours on it so two hour two hours is spent on read on watching a movie but four hours is spent on studying everything else about the movie so typically I will always almost always go Wikipedia read about the story what's the background and any issues about that things like that so I, when I watch this movie it's not just about this movie it's about the World War II history, Chinese modern history, the relations of people, the, you know, many things about this, the story of the movie. These women fell in love with this traitor. The meaning of love, for example, the human relations, the spy, what is a spy, the history of a spy, what is, what is double spy, what are some examples in the world, human history. That that is kind of the things I look into, okay. And the reason I wrote this article, this article specifically is about this song. Now I have some YouTube clips here. You you, you can go there and you'll see it. Uh, because I don't have JavaScript on here, so let's go to let's go to uh, Chrome. This movie. So in one of the scene she is singing a song uh, to this traitor it, it, this this guy is well known okay it's his name or you know this is a hi, uh, kind of history based movie so all the all the names you will find on wikipedia so the the guy let's caution okay like you can just go to wikipedia and search for let's caution then you'll see the historical background and typically Wikipedia will also give you uh, all the the real characters in the history of this movie so that's the poster that's one of the poster for uh, for Western audiences I think for example on Wikipedia you can also go to Chinese version of Wikipedia So yeah, so this is a poster for Chinese, uh, Ch Chinese poster. Typically, Ch Chinese poster and Western they are different because <laughs> the the bottom line of about movies to is to make money and to make money. For example, typically if you use Chinese posters, the Westerners the Westerners don't get it. You know, they don't find it find it attractive. They don't <laughs> they don't see what what is this. I mean, you know, they don't you have to fit in the culture so in western society you have to for example they they have mark marketing researchers things like that so they created this poster instead so it shows i guess a guy you know a man and a, a woman and less caution you know that's kind of uh more fitting now this one on the other hand this is Shanghai era Qi Pao, you know, the American, the social justice, they are talking about that at one time Qi Pao, which is, which is actually not Chinese tradition. But anyway, it's very popular back then. It's a, it's a high fashion, uh, fashion, uh, a clothing style clothing for women, especially for the rich and uh, with much Western influence, you know, it's Shanghai is a city that's it's like Paris, especially back then, 1950s or so. It's much, you know, if you look at the landscape, the skyline of Shanghai, it's all Western buildings. When I was young, I look at Shanghai. Why, 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 why is Shanghai all the Western buildings? Because you see all the, you know, Western style buildings all over the Shanghai Bay. So I was wondered about that. You know, of course, now I know. But anyway, so this this movie, so you can see the histor uh, historical cap uh, characters. For example, Hong Kong, 1938. This is a plot during the Second Sino-Japanese War. A uh, shy uh, and so on. Blah blah blah. Shanghai, 19, 19, 1942. Uh, and they will mention uh, the characters. Okay. 
you know, they, they will mention the historical characters. But anyway, so back to my article. So in this film, this girl, at one time, one of the scenes is sing, singing a song to this guy. And this song, here's the lyrics. There, there are quite a lot of interesting things going on about this. So this song is a very popular song. Uh, and uh, back then, in this during this time in Shanghai, they have a particular. Th there are quite a lot of songs. That's very sad. Uh, okay, so so the lyrics is interesting, and the singing style. The 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 singing style is also very particular. Back then, Th you have this uh, Shanghai, very high pitched sound. Uh, partic particular style and also the the singer of this song back then that that made this song popular she is a superstar uh, this is her name Zhou Xuan and you can also find her on Wikipedia and uh, and she she has a extremely interesting story because she was an orphan and but she became a superstar back then so she's one she's she's basically the number one superstar back then so she became became very rich and she tried to find her parents but she she can't find it but eventually she been, she she went crazy and supposedly she uh she killed herself or something and then the the music the, the the guy who wrote this music is this guy okay uh, now as I uh, you know as I'm writing this article I'm you know I'm you know uh, learning uh, finding information about them uh, so you find the the author of the lyrics I mean the the lyrics and also the music they are different person and th and there's a lot of interesting stories about them for example when when the China took over I think one of them, I forgot which one, uh, got killed. They got, they got, you know, in the Cultural Revolution, things like that, like today's social justice scan. So they got killed and things like that. So anyway, that about the song. The song is very sad. It's uh, very common during that time. And uh, then, Okay, so here is a scene. This here is a song. Actually, I I I I uh, I clipped it. So let me show that for a moment. Let me mute the mu uh, the music so that so that Google will not sue me for copyright. So she is singing a song, a very popular song, to this guy trader. And she, and by the way, both her and this guy. This guy is a superstar, a movie star. You know today, and and she because of this film, she also became a, uh, a star. So anyway, that's uh, she's singing this song in this Japanese place. This this is a Japanese uh, place. And uh, so the. So here is more history. Okay, so here is the history about the guy who wrote the music, and also the history about the guy who wrote the lyrics. So yeah, so this guy, during the Cultural Revolution, he got um, he got. I'm not sure what's his fate, but he's got you know. Uh, Okay, so one of them died. One of them died in prison. Uh, anyway. So the question, so that's the, this is this, this part. This part is what people want me to talk about. You know, on 4chan or what, what or, 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 or today's American, white, white Americans see, see this article. They will, they will pay no attention to everything else. They just want me to talk about this thing, this part. The question of trust in females. Uh, I'm not sure I should talk about that. I, I mean, I could, I could, but... Um, uh, let's talk about 
being being a spy. Okay, being a spy is very. Anyway, so let me read the comments first. Let's see where this this is going. So I've been talking for fifty minutes, and here is the Discord. Let's see what's happening on Discord. Live stream, yes. Uh, general stream. Okay, so let's see. Oh yeah, f by the way, feel free to comment on Discord if you don't want to do it on YouTube. Actually, do it on YouTube. Why not? <laughs> you know, so we have one place to to look at all the comments. Uh, should wear this dress. Kasali should wear this dress. Are you religious? I'm not religious. Okay, I'm. I'm kind of agnostic. Okay. Uh, so Green Deck say okay. So no comments actually. So no comments. So Nibo, Nibo, what are you trying to? Uh, okay. So Nibo says okay. That might be controversial. But what is that song she is singing? Okay. So let's uh, let's talk more about this. Okay. Now mythology. That's a great topic. That's a big topic. Miso misogyny. Okay. This. Social justice fuckheads. Okay, <laughs> Hold on. wait, wait. Today, this today's talk show is not supposed to be any swearing. So, yeah. So these social justice people are very bad people today. They, they are totally ignorant, and whatever the things they say, are completely. It's not. It's not just. Uh, it's not correct just to say they are wrong. They are. They are. Com they are. They are they are like a coat. They are like they are designed just like cultural revolution. They are designed so that they can kill any people they want. That that is about that is about the social justice people and their opinions, whatever you know their things. That is what they want. Basically, it's a principle. It's a philosophy designed so that they can. Become more and more powerful and wipe out any anything they they don't like. You know they don't like you, they you disappear. That's that's what these social justice people are doing. So they have created many things related to sex, many ideas related to to sex, to women, to women, and uh, you know and uh, uh, and trans and and typically the white people. Okay, not okay. Yeah, white people exactly. That's you know that's the social justice term. You know, a lot of people see my videos because I started to use the word white people a lot. I've never used that word before, but in, 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 since maybe two months ago, I started to use that word, and I find that that word quite fitting. And also, I've seen you know so in the past three days. Okay, let me get back to this. So on three chan. This all happened in past three days. People started to talk about my videos because I started to do videos. Once you do videos, people started to see you. It's very interesting because I've been writing blogs for twenty years, and uh, since blog died, you know nobody nobody knows your stuff. It's kind of, and, and also Google, Twitter, they are controlling everything. Twitter wants to, Twitter wants the social. Uh, network, you know, to be popular, and Facebook, they don't want blog to be popular. Same thing with Google. Google tried Google Plus, and Google tried to force you to log into Google Plus, to force every YouTuber to to be part of Google Plus, to force you to use real names, and that that all failed. Google Plus shut down two years ago, last year or so. Things like that. So when blog is dead. You, my blog, you know, you, people don't don't know you anymore. So today, almost like the only way to get heard is to go on, you know, Twitter, not Mastodon, not not any of these open source niche stuff. You go on Twitter, then you just loud mouth post every opinions every hour. That's how you get heard. That's how you get popular, and that is how so many of these social justice on on one side you have these social justice people. Every day they are crying about Nazi. Oh, Nazi is happening everywhere. They they get more and more popular. On the other side, 
starting you st well you have mean mean memes and gamers you know you just post memes and and you know since three years ago you started to have more conservatives people uh, try to fight the social justice which I support fully I support uh, the religious people okay uh, you know they you started to to to, to to have that so basically all this in my opinion it's 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 the problem one of the major problem I would say almost the number one the most important the issue of the problem is the, is is this evil tech corpor corporations Twitter and Facebook they create this situation they create the bubble anyway so back to what I was saying so I was saying it's almost today you you want to you know you have this uh, if you talk reason, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody cares. What you want is, you know, what you want. You you want the likes. You know, you want everyone to hit your likes. So in order to do that, you want to become brainless. You want to either, you know, for example, post memes. You know, something like ticks people, cat pictures, or something angry. That's what you want to do. That then you get people. Then people like, people like. Then Twitter broadcast. Uh, you know, sh spread. You know, tries to. Then your post becomes more widespread. Then you get. Then you start to become famous. Then you make money. So that. So it is Twitter and Facebook. They are creating this situation. Uh, you know, any reason, any rational, any reasonable people, you get. You 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 get buried. Nobody care about you, about your opinion. So, but so back to what I was saying. So since I started to do video. Video is actually a great thing because people see your face. They you see you what what you are saying. You know they get they get it instead of text. Text is kind of like hidden. Um, you can say anything, but but with video, people you know video is the primary communication of human animals. It's it's primal. Uh, text as opposed to writing and reading that takes study that takes years of 10 years of education to be able to read and write stuff like that so vi video is primal so since I started to do video so uh, you know so more people uh, to not get to know me so uh, anyway on 4chan because of the current culture then some people and also because the, of the nature of 4chan you know on 4chan it's not like you go there to post your true opinions or something or maybe you know for is you know people like to say oh for is where no censorship right but it's more it's also, also lots of other things but anyway anyway one thing about for is that you have a particular style you go there you to you know people call it shit posting okay shit posting i don't i don't like i don't even like the term okay so what does shit posting mean? That means you don't you don't care about anything. You just post garbage, like you, you, you know, just do whatever. But anyway, that that has become a style of 4chan. So when you participate in 4chan, actually you 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 tend to want to go into that style. So instead of saying, so you so you want you you tend to want to want to exaggerate things or say you know certain uh, writing styles, wording like you have to use. 4chan jargon, jargons like shit posting, thought. You know, you have to kind of do that. <laughs> then, then you are in group. Then, are, then you are. Oh, this guy is. You know, I I like this guy. This guy is a, a accepted member <laughs> of the group. Um, so anyway, on 4chan. So I also noticed. You know, some so people started to say. Uh, you know, the women issue. Anyway. So I digressed uh, through several levels, but okay, let's talk about the lyrics. Okay, what is this video that is good? Oh, go, yeah, go now. That's the last five minutes of the video uh, of the of this movie. The last, you know, there there are five minutes scene at the end, near the end of the movie, and that five minutes scene captures the entire movie that is the essence of this movie is about okay I'm telling you that as a kind of a film analysis you know in my typical style uh, in my in my in my point of view okay that five five minutes the that near the end is the essence I I I think this this video actually I did this video I I clipped it 
back back then ten years ago. That's my first first YouTube upload, I think, something like that. This, uh, but then then Google says, oh, you violate copyright this or that. So I think I removed it. I I just uh, deleted. It. So the movie, so so the lyrics, the lyrics is about. Okay, let's read the ly lyrics. So, so the lyrics is in Chinese. Okay. But there is an English translation now. Who translated this? Uh, okay, so this translation is from the DVD. So it says, "From the end of the earth to the far, farthy, to the farthy, um, farthest sea, I searched for my heart's companion. A young girl sing, uh, <laughs> a young girl sings while he's, while he accompanies her." Your heart is my heart. Look north. Okay, now that's my that's the first paragraph. The second, the second, how how they call it? The poems. They uh, the second stanza. Okay, po 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 poets call them stanza or things like that. The second stanza is 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 getting serious. Okay, now it says. Looking north from my mountain nest, my tears fall and wet my blouse. Missing him, I will not rest. Only love that lasts through hard time is true. Now, why, why, what does that mean? That be, that 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 is talking about what? Why? Why looking north? Because north is occupied. By Japan. Uh, so the last stanza says, "In life, who does not cherish cherish the springtime of youth? A young girl to her man is like bread, is like thread to its needle. Ah, uh, my beautiful man, we are like a threaded needle, never to be separated." So that that is the song. That that is the song. Okay, so what, what else today? So, oh yeah, so another interesting, so you know, another interesting about this song is the music notation. You see these numbers? Now that is a music notation. That music, that notation is called numbered musical notation. Apparently, this music. So I started to look into this music notation is uh fairly popular in China. Okay. Also in Taiwan because I I have seen it when I was, uh, uh you know, ten years old in Taiwan. So it's it used numbers, not not staffs and notes. It used numbers, and uh, and Wikipedia has an article uh, on this notation. So this is called. So let me read it. The numbered musical notation is a musical notation system widely used in music publications in China. Not to be confused with the integer notation, okay? Then it says it dates back to the system designed by Pierre Gallen, known as Gallen Paris、uh, Chevet system. It is comparable to the、uh, Gongshi notation from the Tang 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 Dynasty. Okay, so anyway, so it's invented by、uh, these people. Uh, in Germany,、uh, okay, I think so. So, Bartholomew, have you ever seen this music notation? So anyway, so you know, this story is about Shanghai. You know, my dad, my dad, my mom came from China. You, you know, I was born in Taiwan. So. Uh, you know, from what I know, my dad has a sister who was one years old or three years old and died in Shanghai during bombing. So that is why I kind of, I kind of get emotional,、uh, somewhat. You know, be, you know. Okay, never seen it before. Okay, so I think that's maybe that's it for today. So let's get a drink or something or.
So today's string, maybe not. So, so today is a milk with coffee powder. So how many people are still watching? Let's see. 22 people. Wow. It's the <laughs> it's I'm getting popular. Post it. What post it? My piano practice books had them later changed to standard notation. Oh, so DP, you are from German, Germany, right? Good, good morning, Scott. So what's still here until 2.30? OK, so let's talk a bit more. So what's up, Scott? So let me show you today. I'm drinking coffee. Well, it's just coffee. Coffee with, um, <laughs> there's nothing to show, actually. Uh, you know, the crystal, coffee crystals. That, that's what they call it. The, the, the proper term is coffee crystals. It's just powdered. It's just powdered coffee, OK? <laughs> OK, so DP is from Germany. So let's see what are some interesting comments that I can uh, block on Twitter. Sea uh, monkey. So DP says, do you use RSS? And what are your thoughts about it? Uh, yeah, I, I do. But uh, hold on a second. So if you go to my any of my blog, for example, Excel programming blog, you see this RSS file, you can click it. And that is the that is the RSS file. Uh, and you know that that this, well, yeah, this is my RSS file, and the the format I'm using. There are several RSS formats. The one I'm using is called Atom. So, so I showed this before. But for example, let me show you. Let me show you another one. So, so I have a bunch of what are these um, yeah, comments? Okay. So anyway, so for for example, you see this is 2019 October fourth. That is this one. So I have a picture about Parcel. Parcel is a JavaScript library. You can see this line. That's a picture. You can open it. You see. So 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 this page is that page. So now suppose I want. I, I let's go here. I create a new one. Okay. I create a new one and say something. Song. Okay. Make a paragraph. Show in browser. You will see it here. Now. I need to add it to the RSS file. So I again, I have a command. If you look at the left top window, you will see it. So let me call it. I press a key. I mean, it, it opens this RSS, RSS file, my uh, RSS file, which is a XML, XML file. And it automatically added this section. So it's, auto, it's automatically added. So now all I have to do, actually, I need to change the title because I don't have a title for this. So let's say something song. OK, save it, close it. Then I go to eShell. I call a command to sync to my web server, or sync. Type the password. And you will see, OK, actually, you will see it added this file. And uh, it added these two files now the other the others are just directories like i deleted some backup files they, then then the directory will show up like that so anyway so so it's updated to my web server so now if you go to xali xali blog uh programming blog okay one of my blog is programming blog so this one And scroll down, you see that's the entry. So that's how I do RSS. I have RSS for my Emacs blog and other blogs. Uh, yeah, so does that make sense? Does that? Yeah, so I do have that. So uh, all those commands are on my Emacs website, by the way. So Xar Atom, uh, make Atom. OK, so search Xar make Atom. Atom, 
entry you you will see it uh, okay I do have a atom web feed tutorial okay maybe it's it's on my okay I, I actually I did a video about it I think yeah I, actually I did a video about that so um, what else let's see yes this movie is uh, interesting so she is a star she became a star Tan Wei a lot, you know I noticed a lot of China Chinese people in China I never been to China by the way so but I noticed a lot of Chinese people in China says she's the most sexy girl <laughs> and this guy uh, Ah, this this guy this, uh, this this guy is a superstar but in this picture he doesn't look so good oh, okay so he looked like that I guess but anyway he's a well-known he's 57 now he, he, he's a superstar by the way another interesting thing about this um, this movie is that so I think it's true okay supposedly they have a love scene make like make make like fucking fucking okay fucking scene naked so the director Ang Lee is very famous now because he has directed many Western movies like some of the superhero movies uh, one of the early Hulk movies by him I think so he, he has directed several Hollywood movies but anyway the director says you know they want them to be real like <laughs> actually so these two actors actually fucking each other when when in the in the film that's real that's not you know fake or body part things like that so 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 this movie is also famous for that and uh, there's another thing oh yeah interesting thing okay so this girl is also a historical figure you know she's a spy so her name is yeah this girl so this apparently this is a real photo of the woman so this this is a modern history of China okay as, as such there are a lot fans you know a, a lot of Chinese people they study they talk about it on, on you know on on TV or you know or books written there's like a, there's a lot uh, obsession kind of almost like with it you know like in compar comparatively in a similar way it's very similar to American Civil War in America okay you have a bunch of white people talking about it all the time they, like how how slave is freed or you know I, I don't understand that you know too too much about that but you know you have a, a, a lot of people <laughs> obsessed obsessed about it every day and in the same way in Germany I guess you know I yeah, I know you have Nazis okay the German party you, people talk about it every day every day um, okay so uh, Scott says I think the question might be also uh, might also be what you use for following RSS feed oh yeah I don't I I I, 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 I talked about this someone asked me about this but actually I don't follow I well in the, there are several bloggers or people I do really want to read like there are several people I mentioned before Stephen Wolfram for example his blog and uh, there's quite a few Steve Yex you must you you probably know right Steve Yex he's a very popular Emacs user he worked for Amazon he also worked for Google but he quit Google like two or three years ago it's another kind of story he he used to be a very f big fan of Google saying saying that you know Google is do no evil but he also quit two years ago he's on Twitter by the way Steve Yek okay so his name is Steve Yegg y-e-g-g -G. or maybe there's a s I forgot anyway it's easy to find St Steve Yegg okay he's a very well-known Emacs blogger so there are okay he's also on Wikipedia so there are a few people for example his blog I would read every day but however I just never 
I actually never got into the the habit of using RSS. You know, I don't use RSS readers. I don't aggregate. So, so instead of that, I typically just whenever I feel like reading, I go around look at their website. You know, and and read all their past past articles. So there is new Discord messages. I hear it. Uh, I can hear it. I would watch, but I'm at work. Would really like to hear your thoughts on Nim. <laughs> That's another popular question. I talk about that often. Nim is like very fast modern language. Uh, it's like P Python, kind of based on Python syn syntax. So I think it's great. Uh, it's the same niche as Go or Rust, but better uh, and with Python syntax. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I don't really know much about Nim, uh, and uh, I don't plan it. I don't plan to learn it though, because because I, I'm just going to stick with GoLand because there are too many languages, and I need to do other things such as I need to uh, get on to learn understand homotopy type theory proof proof theory, differential geometry, things like that, and also my JavaScript project. So yeah. So maybe that's it for today. Yeah, that's it. So anything else? Let's see. Bartholomew says, I can answer a couple of questions on Nim. OK. Go ahead, Bartholomew. <laughs> uh, you know, let me mention, let me also just say, I have some kind of, I don't know, it's psychological what uh, issues, okay? Like when I have, it's, you know, okay, so, so let me put it this way, you know, the today's social justice people, they like to, uh, they, they, they like to uh, victim, they, 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 they like to talk about victim, right? Victimization or, or, you know, things like that. They like to chant about victims. So one of their chant, you know, one of the things they like to talk about is post-traumatic stress syndrome. Okay, post-traumatic stress syndrome. Let's see, how, how do you... Um, post-traumatic stress syndrome, PDSS. Wait, that doesn't sound right. But anyway, that's that's one of the things they talk about, especially for example, rape victims. Okay, rape victims. They like to talk about it all the time. Oh, post-traumatic stress syndrome. Now, so so what I want to, uh, you know, there is something with me. I think that's that's been going on with my because my my dad and stuff. Okay. I, Anyway, so I think that's actually that that's kind. Of, I think that's a symptom I have. I have that. Okay, <laughs> if you want to talk about that, if you know these social justice people, so sometimes I'll just get um, uh, like all of a sudden very sad things like that. Uh, and uh, well, yeah. PDSD, right? Post, post, uh, traumatic stress, uh, the something. Anyway, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> okay, David Corner. PTSD. Okay, what what the fuck that does that stand for? Let's see. Disorder. Oh, disorder. You know, and these people, yeah, they have they 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 talking about oh yeah, post traumatic stress disorder. This is, you know, you know that reminds me. Let me show you this. Okay, then let me show you this uh, comics comics book. Hold on a second. Okay, actually, let me see if I can find it. Anyway, uh, I don't. Let's see. I think that's it for today. That's it then. Um. <laughs> okay. 
so what I let's see what um, so I'm going to delete these sections because I don't need it and go back to my XML file and delete what we just done so I don't want that okay so close reopen back to shell upload again okay that clears out the um, this this something song today refresh so it's good so let's go back to talk show okay so let's see what else actually I think that's it today so Oh, successor to Temple OS. Yeah, some of the 4chan things, you know, <laughs> 4chan is funny. So 4chan, so, so this one we talked about, the, you know, the Mathematica. Is Mathematica really better than Lisp? Okay, you just have to pay, that's all, if you don't mind paying. Uh, so this one, yeah, this one, and transportation. So G never chosen a successor. Kassar has high intellect is a bit crazy, has mental issues, and creates a lot of stuff. Uh, soft like keys and wrote a lot of books that are all free, so uh, has a lot of long video streams act, does not work for big company because of issues. What do you guys think? So they need a successor of Terry. You know, Terry is this schizophrenic guy who who, who who is who went crazy? Who is a genius? Creating created this temple OS, and uh, in the end he died. He two years ago or so he killed by a train. It's unclear whether he, it's a suicide, but anyway that's pretty sad. Terry, this Terry guy, temple OS. Uh, but then yeah, so I forgot what is if there's something I want to. Oh yeah, so this this I I saw this criticism of me, and I wanted to uh, criticize. I want to comment. So anyway, this guy says none of Xar's supposed the accomplishments are anywhere near the knowledge and technical ability needed to create an entire innovative OS together with its dedicated programming language from scratch. That is true. That is actually true. The, the Temple OS, that guy, that guy, you know, that is true. And also he says, as much of, as much of a mean it is, Temple OS is actually a very interesting piece of software, yeah? The very fact that everything runs, okay, blah, blah, blah. So maybe, so maybe one day we will finally overcome the Unix boot phase in technology and stuff. And the last line, last line, exactly what the fuck did Xa do? Wrote a couple of Emacs packages and trolled with his, and trolled with his often in end opinions for, for over twenty years. Okay, uh, yeah, well that's what he what he said is true. You see, what he said is actually true. I never and, and also. I never claimed I was great. You know, I never even claimed I. Yeah, I never even claimed I was a great programmer. Not even just great. I never even claimed that. But however, he's. Uh, you know, he he he's not getting the. Uh, there are other things he's not getting. You know, you can you can tell by the. Uh, uh, he he don't get things anyway. I am not. I, I, <laughs> Okay, so let me, let me well let me follow through. Okay, he, for example, for example, let me let me give you an example. What what is wrong with what uh, of this guy's comment? Okay, first 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 of all, this is just four chan, so there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, people just go there. Everyone is anonymous. You make fun and you post whatever is in your mind or something bothering you. You know, you just say it. You maybe you feel good. So there's nothing wrong with it, okay? And uh, this is actually re re very fairly reasonable post. Again, it's one of the extreme on 4chan. You will not see uh, such a elaborate and well well composed post on 4chan like that, okay? So that's pretty good. And so so he says, okay, yeah, I cannot compare to 4chan. 
that's true, totally true. Um, but there is something he is missing. I mean, if we take his post seriously, there is something he is just missing. Okay. For example, what what I mean by that? Let me let me tell you an example. For example, the let's say political parties. You know how in politics you have parties fighting with each other, A and B. Party A. Let's just say party A and party B. Party A thinks they are right about everything. Party B thinks thinks they are right about everything. So part, party A will post something statistics, you know, some statistics about income, in, income disparity or or payment gap between different age group or male or female, something like that. They they will just post it. So party A posts that, and they they you know to to them they they think you know look look at this this here is a factual scientific piece of statistics. It says we are right, you know the party A. <laughs> it says everything we are right. Okay. Now, but party B, party B posts something something else, some another statistics statistics. Let's say let's say about the the person's income. With respect to his age, let's say that. Okay, so they they have a graph, graph, uh, you know, a statistic, and and to the party B people, they say, look, look at this factual, scientific, accurate, you know, statistics. It says party B is right. We are right. You know, so what this so, what you know, you call this cherry picking. Okay, that that's a phrase. You know, you want <laughs> this. I don't. I don't want to follow phrase because once you follow these jar jargons, it doesn't mean anything anymore. But anyway, the the situation I described, what people normally call cherry picking. So you pick something that represent you know that that s seems you are good about everything, and 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 your opposition does the same thing. But if you are in this group or in that group, if you are in Emacs code, you only see the part that is right. You know, you don't see everything else. So so what I'm saying, my criticism of his criticism about me is that he he he's missing. You know, he just want to. And first of all, I never said I was better than Terry. You know, this Temple OS guy. Or I never said I was better programmer than any programmer. I, actually, you look at my thousands, <laughs> not thousands. You are. You, 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 yeah, yes, thousands of articles or or my past six years of video. You will not see. I ever say that I'm better than this programmer or that programmer. I never said anything like that. But however, what I have said is that all these programmers they are idiotic. They are wrong about some particular thing about programming language design, about Mathematica, for example, the other guy say who says Mathematica is not a general purpose language, you cannot compare to it. You know, that I you know I did criticize. He, you know, in my opinion he's incorrect. So I criticize lots of these things. Of Python, how Python design things, meanwhile they refuse or deny some other things. So I cri criticize I have lot of non standard, non mainstream opinions, that's correct. But I never Said that I'm better than this program or something, just like that. Never, unless I have I was talking about something else to give the background. Okay, so but even I will say now in general, I'm you know I let I said this you know yesterday or a few days ago, more than one time twice in different videos. I'm not in general. I'm not a uh, maybe I'm I'm average above average programmer for sure. But not because of my programming skills. Actually, my programming ability is so-so. Okay. But however, I I do have much far more better understanding knowledge about programming. Okay. About any even a particular specific technology such as Perl, JavaScript, Emacs Lisp, for example. In JavaScript, for example, you have tons of Google. Working at Google, Facebook, they code JavaScript. They make two thousand, twenty thousand dollars a month. I make one thousand dollars a month. But I know JavaScript the language better than all of them. I not well. All is dramatic. Okay, let's say I know I know JavaScript the language. Now remember, this is very specific. Specific JavaScript the language, not how you write a program, not React JS, not everything. JavaScript the language according to JavaScript language spec, ECMAScript. Spec, okay. I know the JavaScript language better than, let's say, let me put it, ninety-five, okay, ninety-five percent of all 
programmers at Facebook or Google. Okay, let me just put it that way. That I claim. Okay, if you, for example, this guy, this guy on 4chan or any any uh, any person. Okay, if you disagree on that, then you can say, you know, no, Sally is bullshit. Then we can talk. Okay, but. But what I'm saying is that I never said I was better than anyone. You know, in, I don't think I have great programming skills. Okay, I, and I also mentioned in a lot, a lot of my videos, a lot of people have great programming skills. Okay, I'm, I'm not not that great, but but better than average for sure. Okay, like depends on what you mean by average. Then we can now we can talk about scientifically what is average. Okay, I can tell you what I mean by average. Okay, so let's say. Anyway, so that's another thing. So anyway, so this guy, he wanted to, you know, he's, in other words, he, in other words, you can say he's doing a straw man, okay? He, <laughs> you know, he says, <laughs> you know, he says I'm no better than uh, Terry. And uh, then the last line, you see the last line, exactly what fuck did Ksa do? Wrote a couple of Emacs packages and trolled with his orphan in N opinions for 20 years. <laughs> that is kind of silly. I mean, that's that's not that's not a serious um, uh, comment. You know, does does he really actually mean to say something with that? Okay, so in general, what does he mean? Okay, so in general, if we take it seriously, what he means is that. Um, okay, so he what he means that in general, me Sali have not done much. Uh, in my life, that is significant. Okay, that's basically what me he means. Okay, at least, at least for sure, wh what he means that whatever I've done in my life is not comparable to Terry, this Temple OS Terry guy. Now, do I accept that? Uh, no, I don't even I don't accept that. Okay, so even if he says that, I don't even accept that because. I, I, I can get into that, okay? So, first of all, I don't even accept that. So, if what he means that Ksali of my life's work is nothing or, or is not comparable te to Terry, uh, the Temple OS guy, I do, I do not agree, okay? Uh, so, let me just talk about that. So, why not? So, for example, let me say, let me put it this way, Temple OS, what does what does he do? I mean, he created this kind of toy operating system. Yeah, it's very advanced. You know, it's, it's he's like a genius, but it's of no use. It's actually no use. Nobody ever. It's it has no practical impact in society. How many people actually used it in the, in the whole world? Everyone is talking about him. Well, maybe one hundred, less than one thousand, something like that. Or or let's say. Be generous. A few thousand people have ever even just tried it. Who has looked into the source code? And also, let me ask, address the question: Will his code, you know, his life's work, Temple OS, will that have some, even some, a little bit impact to society? Like maybe universities will teach one course about it, or something. In general, no. You <laughs> in general, in, in general, no. Well, maybe yeah, some some fans, some fan clubs, yeah. So what what he did? So he did. He 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 created this niche OS. You know, that's that that tickles the minds of the hacker, the tech geekers, like like this guy. Okay, yeah. That's you know, can I use it? I cannot use it for anything. On on the other hand, I Kasali, yeah. I haven't done much. I, well, I wrote a lot of tutorials. I wrote my special plan curves. That that is the most popular website for ten years, from nineteen ninety eight to let's say two thousand five. The most popular. Uh, I got emails from professors, from university students, from PhD students, from carpenters. You know, they asked my permissions to can I use my image to in uh, uh use it in their lecture. I did have that special plan curves. That's a math project. I created a Ergo Emacs package that's been around, used by a lot of people. Let's say a few thousand. Let's say at least for five years. Ergo Emacs distribution. Then I created Xafly keys. I guess 
at least well maybe one thousand let's say the minimum of one thousand people users or something like that or le or even less. Then I created the Casal Emacs website tutorial. A lot of people in fact it is the only resource of all things including published books. This e my Emacs list tutorial is basically the only solid kind of comp the, the most comprehensive compared to all this is by far the tutorial on Emacs Lisp so that's some use okay <laughs> okay that's you know so this guy is you know this this four chan people they don't know nothing okay that so the last you know I don't I don't I, I didn't you know that okay so, so that's it actually today um that's it for today. I don't. I didn't. This today's video is not supposed to. I wanted. I wanted to avoid. You know, to become a megala <laughs> megalomania. Uh, so Scott says. Uh, Scott says it's almost two thirty. Okay. So yeah. So that's it. Thank you guys. And uh, how expensive is the last internet in San Francisco area? I pay. I pay like. Eighty dollars a month, and my speed is only twenty-four megabits per second. Yeah, so you know, it's not it's not compared. You know, I I think you know I I I am very competitive competitive. Okay, so to the degree actually you you could say it's a character flow. I mean, it's building. It's you know pain. You know, it it is pain that I'm alive. It's you know I'm alive because of pain. I'm very con competitive, and I, I'm so therefore I'm also extremely sensitive. If you want to talk about oh you don't know something or you know I don't know something, you know, I'm I'm extremely com competitive, and I spent you know years to study things. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so okay. That that's it about today. So thank you guys for coming. Bye. I'm gonna shut down in one minute. One minute. I'm gonna shut down in one minute. Okay. That's it. So I'm gonna shut down. <laughs>